Hi everyone, welcome back to my creative corner tucked away in the Pennine Hills of Lancashire in the UK. Today I wanted to talk about creative overwhelm. I definitely have periods where I feel a bit stuck because I have too many ideas or I can't decide which of my supplies I want to use. I find it so frustrating when all I want to do is create and I sit at my desk and I draw a blank. Creating should really feel fun and not forced and there's definitely times when I cut myself some slack and accept that I'm not going to be creative for a few days or even a few weeks sometimes. But over the years I've also developed a few habits which help to get the creativity flowing and I thought that I'd share some of those with you today. So this is a Sea White of Brighton sketchbook and it's my little book of colour. Sometimes just playing with colour is really satisfying and it's a really effortless way to just get something down on the page. The whole idea of this book is that I swatch out some of my supplies so that I can refer back to it and then be inspired for future projects. I also like to add in some flower doodles and a little bit of hand lettering to just give the pages a bit more variety and it really encourages me to be a bit more playful. I really, really love working in sketchbooks and journals and sometimes just being able to flip through the pages, seeing what you've created before really helps me to trigger new ideas. Um, sometimes it might be something that I want to revisit or sometimes do something a little bit differently or it might even spark you know, a completely new idea of something that I've not done before. It's definitely really fulfilling just looking back at all those past projects, thinking about what went well, you know, and how you might improve that going forward. So all together, I think I'm currently working in over 20 different sketchbooks and I have talked before about how I use different sketchbooks for different things um, and I posted a while back on my Instagram page about that. But definitely working in this way just really helps me to get started because it limits the options from the outset. It also seems to help me take away a bit of the fear about creating pages that I don't like or um, messy pages somehow because working in this way is quite structured, uh, which really suits me personally. It might not be for everyone. I'm not saying that just because I work this way, you know, it's something that will definitely suit you, but it's definitely something um, that if you haven't thought of it before, it might be something that you want to consider. So this is my little book of colour and I'm just going to flip through some of the pages so that you can see uh, kind of what that looks like um, all together. So you can see it is a real mix of those colour swatches with some illustrations um, and hand lettering thrown in. So I thought that I would share some of my other sketchbooks with you and kind of 
I explain a little bit more how working in particular books for particular things works for me. So this is a concertina book from CY to Brighton and in here I put all the tags that I work on. I really enjoy working on tags. They're a great substrate for trying out different techniques and the smaller size means that they're not too daunting to put together. And then this little square journals from Arteza and focuses on watercolours. So in here there are a mix of different watercolour based mixed media pieces and then some uh, illustrations as well. And this particular journal tends to be the journal that I take when we go on holidays um, because I can just take some limited supplies, usually a small tin of watercolours, a water brush, some pens and coloured pencils and I'm all set to get the holiday inspiration out usually being in a, in a different place, seeing different things, having different experiences. I find that really inspiring. And things like these seagulls and pebbles and there's some sea life uh, elements in a minute as well. They were all inspired by family holidays in the Cornish seaside. There's also lots of florals in this book. Uh, flowers are just one of my go-to subjects. They're what very first got me interested in art, wanting to draw and paint flowers. So there's always going to be some florals thrown into my work. These next journals are what I use for creating mixed media pages. They're all from the Dina Wakely range and have different substrates which make them a really good challenge for creating different types of mixed media pieces on. It really makes me think about the different supplies that I'm going to use and how I can combine them on the page to get the effect that I'm thinking of or you know whatever I'm inspired to do that day. Um, so these pages are definitely all about playing with my stamps and stencils and all the other mixed media goodies, you know, things like the texture paste, embossing powders and glitters, just to name a few. So in the larger Dean Le Wakely journal, um, this one has different substrates within the same journal. So um, again, this is a really different journal. I've never seen anything else like this in the market. Um, and quite a few of the pages that I've made in here, I've made as part of online classes. Um, the heavy duty watercolour paper that's in here um, does stand up really well to lots being thrown at it so this journal is definitely a case of the more layers the better. And these are some of my smaller sketchbooks um, now, in this particular one, I've been completing pages in this little sketchbook for the last couple of years. So it's definitely a slow process working in all of these different books. It's not 
you know, a case of me completing a book in under a month. Um, so I think of this particular one as my black and white book. It's mostly pen work and I create that usually whilst watching TV of an evening. And then this little Stillman and Burn journal was bought purely because of the grey paper. And as you can see, I've enjoyed playing with some of the metallic watercolours in there. So besides working in different sketchbooks, um, whilst that's definitely one of my favourite ways to focus in and avoid the overwhelm, I also do other things. So I keep this small supply of books as reference material, mostly for flower drawing, which is really useful to help with flower forms. I tend to use really simple flower shapes um, because they're really easy to draw and they're definitely my favourite uh, go-tos but sometimes you just want to mix things up and these really help uh, to create ideas of different flower shapes and things that you can work with. I also made this grid which I keep on my pin board at the side of my desk and this details lots of different mixed media techniques uh, which can be really helpful to use as a bit of a pick and mix tool. My memory is terrible and trying to remember sometimes some of the different techniques that you can use I find um, a little bit difficult so this is really just a quick and easy way to remind me of all the different things that you can use and throw into the mix and then finally this is my traveler's notebook um, with this one i've given myself real permission to put all my rules aside and just do whatever i want in this notebook so that might be making notes about ideas or projects creating random little doodles, sketching practice. Um, so I really do think of that as my messy book and it's a great place to collect all those random thoughts. So how do you tackle creative overwhelm? Is it even something that you struggle with? Um, I'd love to start a conversation in the comments to share more tips and tricks. So if there's particular things that you find work for you, please do share. So thank you for watching. Until next time, wishing you a happy creative week.